finally, y'all, after 51 damn episodes, 2.98 doggone seasons, we have got to the end of Love After Lockup. God damn. <laughs> Timo, and we are back for another episode review of Love After Lockup, y'all. This is the season finale, episode 51 of season 2.8, 3.14 to the third power, y'all. This is the final straw. As always, church announcements. If you have not done so, just check on hand, subscribe to my channel. Before you leave, let me know you stopped by. Give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down, and then make sure your notifications are turned on. Y'all like my hair? It was done by Chelsea Monet at the Glam Beauty Bar. I will leave her information down in the description box below. Let me tell y'all, I know we're supposed to be quarantined, but a bitch had to get her nails and her toes and her hair done. Like, if I'm going to be quarantined, bitch, I'm going to be cute. I can't walk around here looking like a D-boy and shit with, I, I can't, with, I can't. So she got her nails done. She got her hair done at Glam Beauty Bar. I will leave her information, baby. When I tell you I love this hair, I love these bundles, bitch. What quarantine? <laughs> they had everything all cleaned down in the shop and everything. I got sanitized and all that. Look here, y'all. I'm glad that we are at the end of Love After Lockup. This was a long ass goddamn season. It felt like it was about a whole year long. So, hopefully y'all are ready for this review. I got my mango strawberry Moscato. and to turn it to a unicorn in this bitch. <laughs> hopefully y'all are ready for this review because I'm ready to give it to you. So, let's get right on up into it, y'all. All right, y'all. So, as y'all know, I did not give y'all a review last week for Love After Lockup. So, what I'm going to do, I'm going to try to just combine some that happened last week with um, the... The season finale that went on um, last night. Okay, so look, Marcelino and Brittany. Now, last week, you know, she went off on his ass, started smacking this nigga upside his head, gave him a whole beer shot because this nigga was out with a poker coach, right? They ended up moving past that. She forgives him, whoop de whoop, yada, yada, yada. Here we are today. She ended up getting a denial letter back from the courts. You know, she was trying to access the court records for the adoption for her two kids. Well, the court said, no, bitch, I'm not going to be able to do it. Then they, they done sent her a denial letter back. So now she actually has to go in front of the judge and explain to them, you know, what was going on with her whole situation, why she was not able to get the kids, why they were put up for adoption and all this stuff, right? So she's real devastated about that. But like Marcelino said, he made a real good point. They got time on their side. The kids are getting older and it's going to be natural for them to ask questions. So hopefully, you know, they will want to seek her out and find her and get to know who she is. And they can sort of build their relationship back up with that. That's my hopes for them. Y'all know I love me some Brittany Marcelino. So I'm hoping and praying for you too, girl, that your babies get in contact with you or you get to rebuild up your relationship with your babies. Because all mamas need to have some kind of relationship with their babies. That's just what I feel. Um, later on, they end up having a gender reveal party, and I'm so happy they are having a little boy. Congratulations to them. Y'all know Marcelino been wanting a boy for the longest, so he's about to have him a whole boy walk around here with this big ass head, like and polka and shit, just like his damn daddy. So congratulations to Brittany and Marcelino. They gonna live happily ever after. Moving on from them. All right, y'all. Andrea and Lamar, aka Baby Nook, aka Lo. Look, I gangsta said tripping banging. Okay, look, so they are back at the house and they're talking to the kids. They're telling the kids that they want to do a vote to see if they're going to stay in Utah or if they're going to move to LA, right? So the kids, the family, everybody did a vote. Her son, um, Nyla, baby girl Priscilla, and baby Nook, aka Look, I gangsta, they all want to go to LA. Her and Tennyson want to stay in Utah. I got a feeling the reason why Tennyson want to stay in Utah is because she sat up there, scared his ass, telling him he got to worry about crackheads and chicken heads and popos and, and all this other bullshit coming and try to kill him in his sleep and all of this stuff done got that boy scared. Now, he does say he understands that it's a great opportunity for them to move out there, but then again, at the same time, his mama done scared shit out of him, which is true. He should have every reason to be, you know, be have some cautious in him. You know, don't walk down the street when the police say to stop, goddamn it, stop, because that's what I, I teach my son. But at the same time, child, 
And she was doing everything she goddamn can to try to scare the shit out of me. <laughs> and it worked, because goddamn it, tennis and ass was scared. But ultimately, they um, it was a three to two decision. They're going to end up moving to LA. And she was upset about it. But like she said, as long as she's pregnant, that's all she care about. So y'all, they are trying for baby number four. Uh, this, this won't be no bust down prison closet, baby. So, you know what I'm saying? Good luck to them. They done moved to LA and they working on baby number four. Next little locked out gangster set tripping bank. But hey, like I said, this one ain't going to be no bust down closet, baby. So she ain't got to be ashamed about this one. Lacey, Shane, and John. Y'all, Lacey did Shane raggedy. I don't care what nobody says. She did this boy raggedy. Kicked him out just to have John sitting outside waiting to come swoop in and take his damn place. John come walk up in the house being so disrespectful. So disrespectful. She's letting him be disrespectful. This nigga just talking cash shit while Shane over there. Y'all, Shane about to cry. I feel bad for Shane. Like, how you gonna do him like this? Like, you see, damn. You ain't gonna be satisfied to one of these niggas get a steel toe boot and take your ass out, bitch. Y'all, John up in there playing with the boy little work hat. Throwing his little work hat everywhere. Y'all, they about to get ready to fight. Damn security had to step in in the middle of Now, I'm going to be honest with you. I think if it came down to John, to John and Shane, I really think Shane would give John a run for his damn money. Because he's young. He got stamina. And he just got out of prison. He served four years. So, the nigga used to fighting. You know what I'm saying? But John... And then, John, why are you sitting there like you won a goddamn trophy, nigga? You won, Lacey. Oh, my God. What are you doing? Like, she's going to fucking cheat on you, like, really soon. Like, what the fuck are you doing? He really think he won. You got Lacey, nigga. That's what you won, Lacey. That surprise? Y'all, she ends up kicking him out. Shane had to put his little clothes in some little hefty bags. Going on to the hotel. And Jean is there. He finna go lay up in the bed. Probably laying in that nigga's spot like he been there the whole damn time. I felt bad for Shane. I really did. Lacey, Lacey, bitch, you ain't shit. Jean said he gonna ask Lacey to marry him. Now, you do know the minute you do this bitch raggedy, she finna go right back to Shane. So, you niggas want to sit here and play ping pong with this bitch, go right ahead. But, Lacey, listen to your auntie. Don't say I ain't warn you when you wake up and you got a goddamn boot mark on top of your fucking forehead. I tried to told you. Who Clinton and Goddess, y'all. Oh, my Lord. Okay. So, Goddess on her way to rehab. <laughs> Clint finna go drop her off. Clint say, I, I, just, I just love her. I can't let her go on her own. I just love her. He calls mama. Mama Alice is like, Clint. Clint, are you taking the bitch to rehab? Clint, Tracy, you there, Tracy? My own speaker, Tracy. Don't fuck it up. Tracy, we got faith in you, Tracy. Just don't do it. She's like, yes, ma'am, I won't do it. I'm going to get my life together. I promise to God I am. Child, Clint go drop this half off at goddamn rehab. 24 hours later, this bitch done left. But she ended up coming back. She did 45 days. I give her that. And, and Clint was right there to pick her up. But bitch, look here. Mama Alice not going to play this shit with you no damn more. This your last and final straw. Mama Alice say, bitch, if you go, you bitch, you go back again. I'm, I'm, I'm going to... Go have to get one of them steel toe boots from Shane or John and take it upside your head. Hopefully, God will stay her ass out of goddamn crack houses and meth houses and shit. I don't know. God just don't know. Bitch, Megan, Michael, and Sarah. This nigga Mike done went to visit Megan in Fort Worth. Now, mind you, he just left from New York claiming he was there that whole time spending the time with his babies, which he wasn't, which he was down there with Senorita side chick. He goes to Fort Worth to visit Megan. He says that he feels like Megan deserves an explanation as to what's going on. Megan like, nigga, what the fuck up? Why the hell you done been done ghosting me this whole damn time? I ain't talked to your ass in a whole month. 
he tells her that he is now in a relationship and he's in love. Megan like, bitch, what? 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 You was just here a month ago telling me that you love me and you want to meet my family and work things out with me, but you got a whole bitch on the side. He's like, yep. Yes, I do. So now she's pissed. And now she realizes that she's been dealing with a fuck boy this whole time. Megan, we tried to told you you've been dealing with a fuck boy this whole goddamn time. Why the hell you didn't know that? I don't goddamn know. Meanwhile, his ass is in Miami with Senorita side chick. He done moved to damn Miami with her ass. They on the beach. This nigga on FaceTime with his bae. Oh, pretty girl. You see the water, pretty girl. I love you. I can't wait to see you, pretty girl. You ain't even tell your pretty girls bye before you left. You just hopped on the first thing smoking the Fort Worth dinner Miami. And still ain't said bye to your damn kids, nigga. Really? But shit, now hold on. It gets better than this. You got Sarah and her black scent in a bathroom taking a pregnancy test. Bitch, you ain't learned from the last two times. You ain't learned from the last two situations that this nigga wasn't going to be here. We don't know if she's pregnant or not. I guess we're going to find that out in, in season 2.9, whether or not the heifer is pregnant or not, episode 52. But bitch, if you're pregnant, girl, what is your, What? Y'all, it's the morning of Tony and Angela's wedding. Tony goes and hides up under the covers because Angela comes in the room. He's like, it's bad luck for us to see each other before the wedding. We can't see each other before the wedding. It's bad luck. She goes in there and she apologizes to this nigga for going to the strip club and turning up on his ass at the strip club, right? I said, okay, cool. You know, it is what it is. Now, Tony says... Angela will forgive this nigga for anything he do. It don't matter what he do. She gonna be right there to forgive his ass. And I said, Tony, you're motherfucking right she will. You're goddamn right she ill. Bitch, let me tell you. So after she leaves, homeboy with the with the buck teeth and the goals, um, you know the nigga with the, we gonna call him Bucky Gold. Goldie Buck. Bucky Gold. This nigga come in. He, because he's the best man. Now, what had happened was, last week, they had a little bachelor party or whatever, right? Because, again, I didn't give y'all a review from last week. They had a little bachelor party over there at Script Club. Tommy ass is right there. Tommy old hating ass going to record this nigga getting a lap dance. Going to send it to Big Ange. Big Ange comes to the whole Script Club and turns that bitch out. She acted a goddamn fool, Tony. You get your ass in this car now. And you come now. She was bad to the motherfucker. So she apologized to him for that, right? So Bucky Gold, he's the best man. He comes over to the hotel room where Tony is. He got his whole tuxedo and all that. My name, name, nigga, you ready to go turn up, nigga? You ready to go marry your woman, nigga? With all this, ooh, I don't know. Wait a minute, time out, dentist. Why do you put goals on fucked up teeth? What kind of dentist are you to where you are okay with putting goals on fucked up teeth? Nigga, you know. What, I don't know what kind of dentist you are. You need to go back to dentist school. But you don't put goals on no fucked up teeth. I'm just saying. Girl, Donna Faye and her homegirl end up coming to a um to Big Ann's hotel room. Bitch, you sure you want to do this? I can put us in the first thing smoking, Big Ann's. We can get on our ass and I love Tony. Oh, you know I love him. And I ain't going nowhere. We gonna work this out. Hopefully he'll grow up after we get married. No, Ange. No. You don't marry a nigga hoping that they gonna grow up. You married a nigga because he already grown, Big Ange. Come on, Big Ange. So her son Cody ends up walking her down the aisle. And it is a really beautiful ceremony that they have right there on the beach. They, um, they exchange their own wedding vows. It was cute as hell, right? Child afterwards, they at the wedding reception. <laughs> Tommy drunk than a motherfucker girl. Tommy called himself trying to make a little speech. He was like, I think y'all think you two motherfuckers, y'all some crazy motherfuckers. And y'all gonna make it. But oh, when they got the sticker to himself, the cameraman was like, what do you think about um Angela and, and, and Tony's marriage? Tommy was like, well, I mean, I, I, I believe it ain't over between us. You know, I'm...
<laughs> that nigga want to cry as soon as he got in the goddamn car. Y'all look here though. 48 hours later, Big Ange is doing her little old uh, interview with the producers, right? But she got a phone. She mad than the motherfucker. Chain smoking them damn bits and then just going through her phone. This motherfucker. Producer like, what happened, Big Ange? I took the Sims card out of his phone and I put it in my phone because I knew something wasn't right. And boom, he's still fucking with prostitutes. Big Ange, you ain't know that, girl. You ain't know that. Girl, she ends up calling Tony up. Tony and her cussing each other out back and forth on the goddamn phone. This nigga is still out there laying it low, spreading wide with these goddamn prostitutes. And you, you married, nigga. You married. Big Ann said, I'm sick of that shit. Big Ann said, went home and changed the locks on the house. She done kicked Polo low, Tony out. Now he living in a hotel. Big Ann. Big ass, look here. Auntie hate to say I told you so, but bitch, we all told you, Big Ass. We told you Tony wasn't shit, girl. So you done got married to this nigga two days later. She done changed the locks and put his ass out. Y'all, that was the end of love after lockup. Poor Big Ass, I feel bad for my girl, but we done all told her that Tony wasn't shit and he was finna do that shit again. We done told you, Big Ass. We done told you. But look here, look. Y'all already know if it was anything that I missed, drop it down below and let me know. I will be here for the next season that is coming up. Hopefully, it won't be these same fools. We got some new fools coming on here and, and, and some new stories or something. Because, goddammit, I can't deal with no more Ange and Tony and Sarah, Michael and Megan and Lacey and Shane and John and all that. I can't even do it no more, y'all. I can't do it. But look here, y'all already know, if it's anything that I missed, drop it down below and let me know. Please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. And your Auntie Mo will see y'all in the next video. Peace out.